Oh, what a pity. So let us throw a pity party. Cause it's a pity. Apparently, allegedly, this is a pity. So let's throw a pity party. Make it a bash, make it a bang, make it a rolling party. Let's take the pity party to another level. Oh, it's apparently such a pity. Oh, uh, oh. Tis such a pity. Oh, let's make a pity party then. I feel as if the pities are in order. Pities are in order. Given that this is a pity party. What you gonna bring to the pity party? This is a bring on pity. Much like a B. O B, but instead of it being a B O B, it's a B O P. Bring on pity! I'm throwing a pity party. I'm throwing a pity party. And the first thing we gonna pity is this hell. Yeah. Is it not just pitiful? Are you gonna do something like that? It's a pity party all around. I feel like let's do all around pity party. How you doing in the name of Jesus Christ? It's your girl, Cranky. Kikarabo. And I've arrived. Manana. Even though people think I'm somehow still behind them. I rather feel like me nang figile. I've arrived. I've arrived, you guys. You know why I've arrived? I mean, just to look at my skin. Who are you ain't trying to gloat over my skin? Hey. My skin is killing it. My skin is kicking in. And my skin is butchering it. My skin is throwing it in the casket of my skin is a burying it at the cemetery following which it's covering it my skin might even be cremating it the way that it's killing it my skin is body bagging it my skin is killing it oh ah when just recently i come from a season of bad skin but it's still a pity party Somebody out in these streets trying to pity me, so girl, bring on P, B O P. It's a B O P party. Bring on pity, do it, so we can compare the pity. Uh, look at my skin, it's killing it. Look at my skin, it's putting it in a mortuary. My skin is laying it flat on a cold bed, but you thinking it's a pity party? I'm glowing, I'm popping fine, I'm not yet even toned, but it don't matter. However, people be pitying me. Is something is wrong with that picture. Something is wrong with that picture. Something is wrong with that picture, don't you see? I'm not a little tired, huh? How you doing in the name of Cran Cat? Not sorry, I apologize. I do, I do. But look at my skin, yo. Ay. I do, I do, I do. Ooh. Uh. I do, I do, I do. Ooh. Like hell. Mm. How you doing in the name of Jesus Christ? It's the Cranberry Cat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a brand new day, and the sun is already set. But it don't matter, it's the 9th of November 2023, and it's a pity party day today. It's popping, it's bopping in my party. It's packed at my party, but it's invitation only. And if you don't got pity at the door, you can't come in because it's a pity party. Yeah, bring on pity, that's what's good.
Take it into my body is pity. Bring me that pity. So we can analyze that pity. So we can figure out if that pity belongs in a mind. Party. It's a mind party. And I cry if I wanna. Cry if I wanna. Cry if I want to. And you would cry too if everybody pitied you. What's up, y'all? I'm coming here to have a bit of conversation just like every day. I read again and there's a pity but people are to be pitying me and we gonna have a discussion about that pity We gonna have a conversation about that pity You're not allowed to my party if you can't bring your own pity Cause it's a B.O.P. That's what's good And if I disqualify your pity If I disqualify your pity As a ticket to come into my party then, uh, I don't know, I think we get to disqualify this as a pity party and just make it a party period. <laughs> but first, let's bring the booze, shall we? The booze of which in this case, yeah, pity. Hmm. Hi, Hazen, it's the Cranky coming in the name of Christ. Let me just put out there a caveat. Couple of them, 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 of them, of them. Yo, yeah, you guys, so like I've got these captions that are the pity party. If you're supposed to be pitying anything over here, it's the fact that I don't have time to edit my captions. And so for those reasons, every so often they're misspelled or it's a completely different word or it's something strange that you don't understand. Maybe even profanity. Using a small G for God so it's irreverent. And I'm like, well, misrepresentation much. But I like them because they're cute. So I keep them there. However, they're inaccurate sometimes. That's a caption and that's pitiable, but as for the girl in question, I don't think so. But hey, we're gonna get into that. Second caption, pity me, show you, I'm putting on makeup, but it's not really mine, eh? Tis fake, this makeup, tis not real. Tis an application and every so often tis bounce off my eyebrows. And tis me like, look like I'm tis desperate. However, I like it for tis the better part of the time. And so I keeps it. Since I can't put on some real makeup, we use an application. So don't be hating on me when my brows be bouncing like a happy baby. Let me just put that out there. It's caveat number two. We've got caveats for days. Hearing lots of third thing that you ought pity me over the fact that my silence detector is giving me problems and every so often exsanguinates. That's what's good. Drinking it as with blood out of my body. That's what's good. My words. It's taking away my words, you guys. And I'm like, oh, that's something for somebody you to hear me cry. Cry me a river. Oh, I used to have all of these captions that were messing with my words. Till I ran out of subscription And then I started to Have to settle for some downgrade Next thing I'm out to you sitting With no words in my speech Sounding so incomprehensible So now I am sad I used to have a perfect silence detector But now it's gone Don't know what to do It used to be great But now I don't know So what we gonna do Say that this is truly pitiful Why did you leave me? Perfect silence to take child without goodbye I ain't got no money You know that this is the kind of stuff that makes me cry once upon a time, I used to have swagger with silence detection. Now I am dealing with one that is saying, Garabo, whatever. So I am crying the river. Crying the river. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, whoa. That's what you, you can pity. Mm. 
Yet another thing that perhaps you might want to pity is the fact that my words, not my words, this put that on them. Speech lag. I might be struggling with a speech lag because I got issues with a phone. I have issues with a phone, so cry me a river. Hey, hey, hey. Cry me a river over that, but don't be giving me no other cries. I've got resource issues. Pity that. Pity that. But don't pity me. Pity CapCut for having CapCut captions that don't make sense. Pity my silence detector for not being good at what it does as a technological company. Pity my iPhone for struggling to last me 20 years and my mind just 10. Pity the fact that I have got no actual makeup but I have to use an application, okay? Pity that! But don't pity the girl because the girl is flat. Ugh. <laughs> Uh, 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 uh. I'm too legit to quit like MC Hammer and can't nobody touch this eater just like him. Ooh. But like we got a pity pa party over here. We don't understand what's going on. So we gonna give a lesson about how we do this falsetto fake. Okay, you know what? So like I'm not Justin Timberlake, so we don't do falsetto or falsetta or falsetti. It doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, I'm not to be pitied. No, don't do it. Guys, you know what? I've got problems, but this is a party where we are bringing pity as a booze. Because everybody out here getting drunk on pity. We gonna have some problems. Everybody sit down. I feel as if though I need to go and identify with the microscope whether or not the booze you brought to the party, otherwise known as pity, are worth the while to come to the party. And if by the end of this pity party, I don't approve any other booze, this then stops being a pity party. And it's just, just being a party. How we clear? Why under heaven do I appear like somebody out there in these streets to be pitying me? Guys, let's have a conversation. Guys, let's have a conversation. Good people, except ain't nobody good, no, not according to the Lord, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God man. But everybody out there trying to think they get But that's just a thing you I think it's an act of kindness and goodness To pity me while you sit over there Sit on with you, there you go Looking pitiful just because I let you go Then you've got the brazen audacity To pick me cause you could to pity me because you put a stance on me. Ah, uh, oh Jesus. Why don't we come and do it around these people? Man, oh man, do they exhaust me? I don't understand why anybody thinks I'm a pity guy. It doesn't make any sense, cause I've arrived. Last time I checked, last time I checked, last time I did a check, oh. And that road was the road that leads to life. And a few people find it, hey, I found it, mm, I found it. And that road is the road that leads to life And few people find it mm. Few, few, a few, few, few But I found it Oh, the road is narrow that leads to life and few people find it i'm gonna keep on saying it and i found it i did i was that lost coin i did i was that lost sheep i was but i got found it my soul was wondering it was in dry, arid places. It was. But then the Lord done picked it up and dusted it off and put it in heaven. So, hey, I found the narrow road. Oh, I did. Yeah. So, where the 
idiot exactly somebody tell me why you pity me I need to know how in the world you gonna pity me when I got eternal life eh? and somebody tell me what's with the pity if I'm going to heaven I'm here not you're the one over here struggling with hell of fire for a destiny I just feel as if the perspective ought to be what you rather wear kings of the earth alongside all the peasants following you mm -hmm. I found the narrow road that leads to life while you still struggling around going to hell and stuff. So tell me what booze you got at this B O P. Bring on pity. Uh, then we will make this a pity party. Otherwise, we ain't get telling I mean, when you pity me, oh. Uh. We're gonna have a problem. We're gonna have a discussion. I said, Bliff, though. I'm poor. But according to the word of God, when I am poor, I'm rich. Yo! How does that even work? How does that even work? Yeah. How does somebody be an Adam Skipsol? An Adam Skipsol, a DJD, see it? Oh, Adam Skepsa say it me helped me, sister Adam Skepsa when you was a poor little lady, poor little lady struggling with stability of lighting, and yet she is very wealthy, exorbitantly wealthy. She's out here killing it, kicking it, having a mention. How in the world is that even a thing? It's not even worth a mention because it's been prepared for me in heaven above, but you don't believe I am rich, even though I am an Adam Skipsel. I guess Adam Skipsel is like me help me, guys, in this. My, 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 will, my, 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 can we please have a discussion over here? We're gonna have a talkative discussion. Look at me and my speech lag. I told you. I guess I didn't skip some a dying iPhone. My iPhone is gebore, yalla. My iPhone. It hurts over there. <laughs> it's giving me problems. I'm an Aramis Kepsal. I don't have proper recording devices. Everything in my life, it is appearing to be falling apart. But guess who's going to heaven and who's not? I'm going up and you're going down. How we still pitying? Is it still working out for you to have an unfortunate pity in your heart? Looking at me like I am pitiable. I apologize, I'm sorry. I've never been the kind to take stuff like that in my stride. I feel as if though we need to come and correct the perspective up in here so people might recognize where to find sorrow, where to place sorrow, instead of in the wrong places. Like, what are you doing? Nenzantoni, I am aware. Oh, hekesmuch. Oh, I'm exhausted of seeing the same stuff. Yes, and these lighting conditions must just give me a break. Give me a chance, ne? Give me an opportunity. Give me an opportunity so I can carry on doing what I want to do. I want to be given an opportunity. It's standing right in front of me. And this here is my perfect opportunity And that is standing right in front of me To tell you right and to tell you wrong As to why you are thinking all wrong things of me This here is my perfect opportunity To tell you where I'm going e. Can we have a discussion about the pity all up in my grill? It needs to cease and desist. Somebody needs to stop. There's got to be a little bit of a cessation of hostilities against Cranberry Cam. Hooray! Let's grab a scenario. We know how to love scenarios, ne? Imagine the rapture has happened. Boo! Oh, whoa, man, like, where the people at? In heaven above, the Lord has taken his babies, he's taken all of his saints, yeah. 
They are killing it, kicking it, beefing with the earth. Mm -hmm. But from a place where they're safe, ooh, the vantage point is up, ooh, above, ooh. The rapture has happened. Who's been raptured? Let's imagine, shall we? Let's put this into an imagination. The homeless guy that was holding up the sign that it's the end, the end is here. It's the end, the end is here. Ooh. Dropping five rand a centin. Dropping ten rand a centin. Dropping thirty bucks if you're feeling generous because you think that they run like a centin when you earn fifty thousand rands a month. Ay. So you giving the hobo thirty bucks? Yeah, no, that makes you stingy. Okay. Mm. However, this hobo knows him some Jesus. He's aware that the end is here. So alongside his little ooh, I don't skip so spare me some little things. There is also a caption that ooh, the end is here. Jesus bless you. <laughs> He's in heaven now. <laughs> Who does it remind you of you guys? Just in case you've not read the Bible, it's called the parable or maybe the real story of the rich man and Lazarus. Yeah. Here in last this guy in Abraham's bosom, otherwise known as conversion or translation to heaven. The rapture has happened and this guy's hanging out with the saints that came marching in. Oh, the saints came marching in. They're chilling around the throne of God oh, while the tribulation is about to happen. It turns out the doodle was nobody, somebody now. <laughs> But okay, my record, do I? Because me, I keep telling the same story over and over again, huh? I keep telling the same story. I'm not gonna have problems with you. I'm exhausted saying I never sign up for this. But you give it to me anyway. Never ask for social lifestyle. But you make me live a lifestyle I don't go ask for, eh? And then you have present audacity to go and pity me. Uh, brother, gain perspective, eh? Gain perspective. Please, can we just continue with the analogy? Here is a homeless man. Ain't homeless no more. <laughs> Rapture has happened. He's in heaven. Yeah. Mm. What's he doing in heaven? He's preparing to watch the Hunger Games. <laughs> May the odds be ever in your favor. <laughs> He's Effie Tinkett now. I mean, look in the wall and the heaven how the tables have turned. Guess who's the capital now? Who's Katniss Everdeen now? It's you. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Cabin in the Woods, have you guys seen that movie? Have you? Somebody tell her, sister. From left to right, have you seen the cabin in the woods? Yeah. It'll freak you out. Oh, I was scared. Like, I said, be afraid, be very afraid. It's her scrag. Now, the last egg jump ate my skin. Yo, the fell egg jump egg loop ate my fell. You're that scared, girl when you watch Cabin in the Woods because these unfortunate young people going on holiday and ain't nobody coming back home <laughs> because some experimental corporate made a decision to put them in an arena and kill them off one by one mm. oh how those kids die in the Cabin in the Woods are so unfortunate but anyway 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 that doesn't matter because the tables have turned and now Christians are corporate in the cabin and the woods. Oh, 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 that happened though. Like why I have a headache fever in the morning when I realize that Hollywood has predictive programmed the tribulation. Why 
do you think the entertainment industry is so obsessed with a bunch of elite people watching some suffering, groveling poor people? Basically fight to the death or run away from threats in an arena until they either die or be the sole survivor. That whole theme in Hollywood is indeed the book of Revelation. So you are putting us in little arenas now. Look at Karabu being Katniss Everdeen struggling to come up for air. You favor me and so every so often you throw me a little apple from the sky and I feel good that I can at least burp some muesli. But you're busy watching me suffer and you have the brazen audacity to pity me. Come on, we're gonna have a conversation. You have the brazen audacity to pity me thinking that my this girl is struggling through so much. She's going through a whole bunch of nonsense. Her family's treating her like trash. Couple of that. There's like some crazy monster trying to marry her by force. And then there's like a whole bunch of other Corobella randos coming from all over the show and she just can't seem to catch a break. She fasts. And after fasting, she conquers. After conquering and going back to eating again, then another barrage of attack. Can a girl catch a break? Somebody. Oh, my neck. Oh, it's broken. I can't anymore. Ooh. Please, give me a break. Can't you see? My neck is broken. And they're like, you're gonna have to fight. Even with your neck being broken. But hey, Karabo, Karabo. May the odds be ever in your favor. Hmm. Here lies if you think you're telling me to go back in the Hunger Games arena with a broken neck. Girl, have you no compassion? My point exactly. That level of lack of compassion for people who are suffering, guess who's going to be walking in it later? Because you deserve all that judgment. It is the saints. They'll come marching in. They will be watching. You walk around with a broken neck and ain't nobody coming for you because ain't no triage available because ain't nobody out there in these streets manning the hospitals because there's a zombie apocalypse like. It's coming. It's arriving. It is knocking on your door. It is coming inevitably and on that day you will learn you were flawed. In your mindset, yalla. Yalla is the autumn escape, sala. But now, today you are just thinking kirab is the autumn escape, salvas yo booze. Bring on pooza. Bring on Pity. If you come to this party with pity, we're gonna investigate if it is true pity, and if at all it is true pity, you get to stay. If not, get out, please. Cause this is a celebration. It's a party of monumental proportions. It's a party of celebratory order. It is a party not to pity the individual in question that is throwing the party. Please make no mistake. Like, make no mistake. Don't pity me. I am above you. In the worst way you guys can. Uh, it's me. I'm gonna get to the point ultimately because you know I'm that girl that's always arriving at the point. I'm good at getting to some points. Y'all know that, okay? Here lies the hobo hanging out in the sky. He is now, ooh, like what? He could have been like maybe 60 years old with arthritis, having a bad case of malnutrition, struggling to come up for air on rainy days. He is shriveling, shrinking up into a corner, basically merely dying from hypothermia. But before he dies or perishes from hypothermia, whoops, the rapture happens. And now he is this like juiced up hunk that's like 25 years old with like energy from here to Timbuktu that's about to watch the Hunger Games. And who is the tribute now? Who's a 65 year old geriatric senile rando with arthritis and a freezing disposition about to die from hypothermia? It's you. It's you. But today you're a 65 year old CEO of an organization and you is all pompous. So pompous are you that you're bouncing up and down on beach balls in your organization, knocking over the new interns the way Uslanyanga Ding. You're an atom, always buzzing, have no regard for the lowly, and you like pride yourself in giving the hobo on the side of the street a 100 rand note when you are a millionaire. And you think that that makes you generous. Please, Yella, create some perspective as I believe, ne? Get some perspective, Jella. You who's busy tipping the waitress at the restaurant 500 rands when you're a millionaire and you think you're generous. <laughs> uh, 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 ooh, oh, you're funny. You're hilarious. World citizens, you don't know what you're about to experience and yet you are out here with this like minuscule mindset thoroughly interrogating the prospect of me actually being pitiable. I know it's king not to block I did then you get it on it about the pity wa I'm not interested in being pitied because frankly I've arrived and you haven't mm Kifitle na my life in crash up khale kifitle so much so have I like literally arrived I've been parked for so long that my car is now like ashy outside that's what's good 
It's ashy. It hasn't moved in a minute. I have to, I, I need like some ready to the booster cables just to get it to like start again. The way that Ellen Khaliki fix Lenka thing. I have arrived. Y'all need to understand, gain some perspective, please. Wear some baruka on that yellow no as naked. Wait to get a little shelling in the moon. And if you like a calaca paramaruku, a parang drank a camelay thing. Some up a rang to rang camelay thing. Some up a rang the blue mass, the latanga gizimis. Some la tang zonga el oi a para because no, the last key feeling car away to get your own or shelling. And a grand shop of Honamu to appreciate thanks about Oma Munile. Wait to get you a mooning one come to Lamka because how I am para girls. I'm a para bonga over the Tama para drank over Kuta Utro boy because you are naked. You are butt naked and the nakedness is about to be exposed. <laughs> exposed in the last way. You are about to recognize the discomfort of the unfortunateness. And when you discover the unfortunateness of the discomfort, you are going to be like, oh goodness, how, uh, how audacious was I to think that I was generous to the hobo that I gave 450 rand when I was a millionaire that could have just put him in a home. You're gonna learn when you're Ananias and Safira acting like you belong to the body of Christ but you're withholding from the body of Christ. You don't know what damn it is when you that Randall that Archer thinks you are a philanthropist when you've got family members for crying out loud that are living in shacks. No, 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 no. You're in church every Sunday so I mean really you're going to the sky. Mmm. Sinner's prayer, that's you girl. Jesus, I come into my heart, please. If a bit of good if you did it on top of that, please give me a car. As well as good pits, I don't know, cause I can't stand the one from Tabernacle. And when you're done, just throw in the first one as well on that front of mine, because really and truly would be amazing if she wasn't so fast at growing, cause I'm struggling with jealous. But you forgive me past, present, and future the sins, so amen, hallelujah, bah. Yeah, and you still here hanging out with your dry as she lips that don't know how to pray a proper prayer to heaven. Mmm. But guess who's in the sky? That very friend that you two feeted. More life thing. Out of a career, got it tiring, girl. I'm not doing feeling like a girl, I'm barely. I'm not doing business like a girl, barely. I'm not doing business like a girl, barely. I'm not doing business like a girl, barely. Mmm. Guess who's in the sky now? The unemployed lady that you done misfortunated. Mmm. Let's go on right ahead to speak English only because at this point I just feel as if though it's unfair not to. Because this is an important message. Mamelang. Utbelang redzang listen. Okay. The guy in the sky that was a hobo is now healthy, wealthy, and wise. Like quite literally. He cannot sin. He has inherited a mansion. Like proper. In my father's house are many rooms and many mansions. If I were not so, if it were not so, I wouldn't I would have I wouldn't I wouldn't have told you that. And as it stands, I go to prepare a place for you so that where I go there you may be also with the father. Mm. So this dude has inherited a whole mansion. But you see, tables begin to turn once he goes in the sky. Yeah, the dude who gave him 450 bucks, thinking that he was all generous. Go, 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 Since everybody else just gives him five rand, four rand, two rand, even though they earn 50,000 rands per month. Mm. Yeah, that dude won 450. That guy in heaven above. Yeah, him and all the saints and the hordes of heaven will make a decision whom they will give mercy and from whom they will withhold mercy. Heaven will make a decision who down here in these streets is given mercy. Mm. So you who prided yourself in your works, you're gonna have to straighten up and fly right. That's what's good. That just like Katniss Everdeen, in the Hunger Games arena, somebody from the capital might just favor you and send you some salve in the sky to rub generously and live on your skin. Depending on how God feels about your leaf on life that you have turned after the rapture, he might send you salve from the sky so that you can rub it generously and heal. He will enable you to survive miraculously. He will put a seal on your forehead so that when like scorpions that are the size of like human horses, human beings and horses, yeah, when they're striking people for five months, who are seeking to find death and not being able, they will pass you by without striking you because you've got the seal of God on your forehead. So depending on how you act, Rando, in the tribulation, you might be given, you know, concession from the sky to just not go through as much nonsense as everybody. But nonetheless, you are still quite unfortunate in comparison to the people in the sky. We're watching the Hunger Games, don't you see? And you're the tributes are going to be the little minions in the cabin in the words and from heaven there will be decisions made as to what plagues are to throw just read from revelation 1 to 22 23 there's just like these like bombs that keep on landing 
That's what's good. And the bombs land so much on randos down here in these streets that just like the capital in the Hunger Games, who when like tributes are busy dying, just like corporate and cabin in the woods, right? When people are like busy dying, there comes a time when people are toasting, they're cheersing, they're drinking, they're celebrating, they're eating, they're being merry, they're chest bumping <laughs> while you die. Yeah. While you just get moaned to the ground. While famine continues to ravage you. <laughs> We're like cheersing. Great multitude in heaven celebrating, rejoicing. Hallelujah, glory to the one on high while you're dying. Mmm. Yeah. Literally exactly just like in the Hunger Games and in the Cabin in the Woods. We first start out watching this like massacre on the floor. And then we take, you know, a breather to eat some dinner. Yeah. While you still die. That's what's good. Uh, so again perspective shall we correct it over here in these streets uh since you pity me i feel as if though we need to rearrange the pity can we do that somebody oh if this is a pity party i will be the one to host it i will throw it i will throw it if at all i'm in dire need of being awarded pity but i get to decide what booze comes into my part aim if you bring adequate pity then it'll stay and it'll continue to be a pity party but if i cancel every last pitiful thing you bring me it's not on that day a pity party just a party it is a party to be a child of the living god born again because you have found the narrow road that leads to life that oh goodness give me a drum roll from somewhere <laughs> Few! Yeah, few. Few there be that find it. So, I mean, like, when you're that rare, and the thing that you're rare about is, like, eternally saving, while the thing that makes everybody a grand majority is the thing that, like, chars them forever. Hey, and thank you, Kupari Cheng Cheng Perspective. Can we please change the perspective as to who we hear out here in these streets ought be pitied? According to the scriptures, if at all there is no God and we're wasting time about the resurrection, we of all people are most to be pitied. But I mean, Christ did rise from the dead. And so we will also rise. And when we do, we will celebrate, but not first before decimating the earth. First Angela. And then somewhere in the middle of decimating the earth, we're going to eat. And then after eating, we're going to come back and run this show including you, if you make it to the end, for like a whole thousand years. That's gonna happen. So I mean, if you like my life, then you change your perspective, you know what I'm saying? Hey, grab that like onesie that you're wearing and put it upside down that you might be viewed for exactly what you are, entirely confused. The fact that I am pitied is frankly offensive. That's what's good. Because I have found the pearl of great price it is written in god's word that the kingdom of heaven is like a pearl of great price and a merchant will go and sell everything that he has in order to be able to afford to acquire it well let's think about what i've lost okay you lost a job you lost a love you lost a family you lost apartment uh, you lost a furniture you lost a respect uh, you lost a degree um you lost a court case um you lost some clothes um you lost some shoes um you lost your clout the list goes on um so i sold it all it turns out in order to acquire a, a pearl a pearl of great price that really ain't nothing come pair i lost those fields homes family everything with persecution and uh, and now i shall gain a hundredfold over all that stuff with eternal life uh. some of along matthew 10 mark 10 
if anybody has lost fields, homes, brothers, sisters, kids, dogs, pillowcases, guitar cushions, couches, cars, people, random everything, glitter, makeup, you will gain a hundredfold over all that stuff which you have lost with persecutions and in the next life, eternal life. Go read Mark 10, please, I implore you. At this point, I need to what's actually going on. Like, please, gain some perspective. Mm. The kingdom of heaven is like a pearl of great price, and a merchant will go and sell everything that he has just to acquire it. And I have acquired the kingdom of heaven. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and then lose his soul exactly? Don't nobody know what that's all about. Doesn't make any sense, you guys. It really doesn't. But people are doing it. Mm. And the people who are out there giggling at me, trying to rock up with some strange booze at my pity party, that's not even truly a pity party, but just a party, period, are trying to feel sorry for my losses. When they put me in a position to suffer those losses, now you pity me? No, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. You ought to be wiping your behind. You ought to be calculating your, 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 the size of your mouth from the grime you've been eating. You ought to be combing your hair because it's scruffy. You're looking disheveled. Go put on a proper shirt that is crisp and ironed. Because right now, Ututubani, Obuti, Kifilangaru, who goes to the office, Asa Ainam Tete Maburuhung, Ingaza La Kolishwa Bene Boy, Amba, Uyo Aina Upolugwe. Before you rock up looking at me, feeling like I'm disheveled, please don't look at my lowly, lowly constitution. Because at this point, I am representing what otherwise the Bible would call treasure and jaws of clay. Like I might be lowly and meager in my outward appearance. My circumstance might be lowly too. I might have nothing to my name having lost everything. Ooh, but I have acquired the pearl of great price. Narrow is the road that leads to life and few there be that find it. So therefore, when you are weak, you are strong. When you are poor, you are rich. When the world is against you, who cares? Because if God be for you, who can be against you? Like you must understand, comprehend, get it, gauge. Thoroughly study it, read into the text and put a magnifying glass in it, on it. To see, perspectively, who under heaven here is truly with joy, is truly arrived. When, who is still You don't know nothing about Jesus And so you have not even started your journey Like proper, you have not even commenced And yet you are here Having the brazen audacity to come and pity me You put me in a position to be pitied I'm sorry, I won't take it I can't David was young yet then he got old yet Never had he seen the righteous forsaken Nor their children begging for bread I am not a beggar, I am a perspective giver However, this world is wicked and perverse and so they seek after a sign you're hoping to see me get all broken through and whatnot god will give you no such thing he will rather give you the sign of jonah or the sign of the son of man my very disappearance is your optical illusion do you understand it is your strong delusion my appearance of unanswered prayer and therefore what also appears to be the mistake i made in choosing jesus is precisely the thing that is going to knock you off your feet understand O oh planet that i am a travesty to be pitied because frankly you who sit around merely pitying a suffering saint and not doing anything about it have put yourself in a position to later on be pitied by that same saint if at all because you see the thing about going into heaven is that the lord gives us the right hearts he gives us these incorruptible bodies that feel as he feels and that understand as he understands you know how god can crush his own pottery the Lord can crush the very vessels of dishonor that he created without batting an eyelid. Yeah, so too are we going to be given a similar constitution in heaven. So these days we feel sorry. We feel pity for a bunch of random people crashing into Israel, trying to take it for themselves when their hospitals are being bombed. But the day is going to arrive when as Christians, we're not going to be conflicted, for instance, with a humanitarian crisis in the Gaza Strip when we understand what needs to be done because if stuff needs to be mown to the ground it will be mown to the ground because it's what needs to happen and we will not care when man woman and child is perishing let's go grab the bible 
I want to read to you a portion of scripture that was uttered to me in a word of knowledge just as I was exiting sleep. If anything, I was not even exiting sleep. I was yanked out of sleep by this very passage as in the Holy Spirit literally yanked me out of sleep just to tell me this. And when I opened that passage of God's word, I was like, oh my. And then I went back to sleep. He said to me as I was sleeping, nah, he yanked me out and said, Deuteronomy 3, 6. I thought initially he said Deuteronomy 36. I went then to Deuteronomy 36 and found that it doesn't exist in the scriptures. So then I figured that what he was saying was rather Deuteronomy 36. I was languishing over my, my sorrowful state, my pitiful life. Yeah, the one that you're pitying. Mm. Feeling all sorry for myself, moaning, groaning, crying, grumbling, be a yeah, pity party. Ugh. Yeah, I was being that thing. And then the Lord yanked me out of sleep after I cried myself to sleep and said Deuteronomy 3, 6 to help me understand what under heaven is about to be the tables that turn. What did the Lord say upon gazing at my sorrow? How did he comfort me? How did God comfort me? This is God's comfort. So if you think that the destruction of entire villages is a sorrowful sight in is a is a sorrowful thing in the sight of God, only gauge if the Lord is the one that sent that massacre. And if it's him, no, it's a joyous celebration when that entire village gets mowed to the ground, man, woman, and child. Because y'all don't understand the holiness of God. It is such that no one does good, no, not one. All have sinned for and fallen short of the glory of God. So there is no such thing in heaven above as the humanitarian crisis in Gaza. Just an entitled people who took the land of God from the people of God and sat around there. And so when they get ultimately massacred by God, which at some point it's gonna happen if they don't humble themselves to the God of the universe, it will be perfectly just for that to happen. But you see, as Christians, we twitch, we glitch. We struggle with compassion over things that we ought to be stiff-necked concerning. In other words, we must be as rigid as God is rigid. But you know, we're made of this body of death, of death made of dust and so he has compassion on us what god has allotted to people the stubborn the rebellious the obstinate that refuse to move out the way will be blown out the way as with a tsunami in sodom it was every living creature in there that was killed man woman child and beast do you understand so you out here feeling all sorry for some dead dog you feeling sorry for like dead infants dead women and dead children in an environment where God was judging an entire land, it is because you don't have the perspective of the holiness of God. When the Lord has said to a people, A, B, C, and they say D, E, F, when he has made a decision then to annihilate them for their stance on D, E, F, he is God, he is holy, he is in the heavens, he does whatever he pleases, he gets to. He has given them grace, he has been slow to anger, has abounded in steadfast love, not willing that anybody should perish, but that all should come to a knowledge of him. But when you keep on nudging at him, when you keep on poking and prodding away at his nose and causing it to bleed, that's when he's then going to annihilate you with your babies. That is God. But you see, when you manufacture a God in your own image like Islam, you will go and massacre babies, cut them in half and burn them in the land of God's people with no cause that makes any holy sense at all. And so therefore you have angered, made livid, caused to be violently vus, a holy God that is waiting for the day when he's going to mow down anybody that stands in his way. And the day is also going to arrive when Garabo down here in these streets will also not pity the casualties in hospitals in Gaza. When Garabo will not pity what the UN and everybody calls the humanitarian crisis. Today, my heartstrings are pulled by the faces of the children that are being bombed by Israeli airstrikes. Right now, I am pitying the humanitarian crisis indeed, as the world calls it that, in Palestine. But the perspective of God is, why under heaven did you go into the kibbutz? Why under heaven did you try to massacre my people while they slept in their bed, having not been provoked? Why oh why? When then people retaliate against you, oh Hamas, and then therefore there are humanitarian like casualties, collateral damage in civilians. You do not, for the life of you, get to continue to blame a people that tried to live at peace with you and you would not relent. Do you understand? You would not relent. You relished in the prospect of just massacring in the name of a fake God. Yeah, we're angry as Christians. Yeah, the Jews are angry. Yeah, the world that is in support of Israel is angry, but nothing in comparison to the what the Lord God Almighty on high feels. So mad is he about what's going on that he's even going to land upon the West Bank. Mount of Olives when he returns just to prove that this land belongs to my people. And so all of the casualties that will happen at the second coming of Jesus Christ, never mind in the Middle East, but across the world, will indeed have duly earned their 
I guess, judgment. They will have duly earned it. And as his saints that are going to come back with him, we are going to feel a holy, holy consecration to the significance of how relevant it is that these people should die. We will just like God, not bat an island when entire cities are being mown to the ground and people caught in the rubble are little babies, pregnant women, children, the elderly, and then women and men. It will not move us even slightly. That's the glory of an incorruptible body. We gain the sense of God's justice. And you out here pitying me when I'm that girl. <laughs> like that's what I'm gonna be. Like that's what I'm gonna be. That's the level of resolve that I'm facing. And yet you are literally standing where you're standing pitying a person that's not gonna bat an eyelid. When a whole stone from the sky lands on your head, splitting your entire body into two in front of your two kids and wife while they mourn over there in waking space on this earth as i walk with this mortal body i would grieve for that widow and those children i would also be devastated in my own sensitivity about that devastating death but up there he had to go that's all that it will be it'll be black and white there will be no gray area and you pity that girl you're naive you pity a woman that is going to be given that level like i said resolve godly resolve a justice that is unyielding in, in, the, in the final stages of the history of the human race with a god whose wine press of his of wrath has reached the height of itself he has gone to the end of himself with humanity he is no longer striving with them it is the final judgment he has given you two thousand years plus all the other times before christ to get your act together and you haven't and now in this one pivotal time in history he is at the end of himself he's reached a brim there's no mercy to be given to the earth only a remnant will get saved and when he is finishing the earth off ain't no Antony Guterres gonna speak about how it is that there is context to what Hamas did that it cannot be looked at in in, in a vacuum because they've been suffering like what do you call it he said what's these words suffocating occupation there will be no Antony Guterres that is being heard reasonably so by anybody in heaven as to me he's making sense there will be no random riots all over the earth no random displays of incendiary insensitivity against an innocent people that were massacred the second worst such massacre in their history that's what's good since the Holocaust yeah, there will not be Harvard professors saying a different thing. There will not be universities chanting and grunting, persecuting students on campus that are Jewish. There will not be people on the streets of London and New York thoroughly standing for these butchers, because that's what they are. There will not be any such retaliation against the God of the universe that is not going to get met with basically like plagues from the sky. Indeed, people will still bash their fists at God, neither repent of their sorceries, their fornications, their revilings, and their blasphemies, but as they are busy reviling and blaspheming and doing that strange thing, they're busy getting, like, you know, lambasted by plagues, the gravity and the monument of which is unfathomable. You can't even fathom how in the world a world like this looks. As it is described in the book of Revelation, you cannot even fathom it. Yeah, you will have earned every last thing. Like there will be no military commandment, commanders, leaders of Hamas that are safe. Hanging out in Qatar or Qatar or whatever. While little boys that are under the age of 21 go into the kibbutz and kill children, beheading babies. And then make a phone call to their moms and say, look, I killed 10 Jewish people. A husband and a wife are dead right in front of me. Both the leader in Qatar, alongside his little minions, are gonna die in the same explosion. Only read Revelation, is it six? Where the kings of the earth are saying, rocks fall on us and hide us from the one seated on the throne. Kings of the earth. In other words, the dude chilling in Qatar from Israeli retaliation, he's, there's gonna be no place to hide. That's the time that's coming. And we're gonna be in heaven basically watching them from the sky on some, oh, look at that guy that thought he could hide in a cave. <laughs> Boom, rock on you now. Look at the guy that thought that he could go to a different country and so be safe from retaliation. Look at the guy that's hanging out in some underground bunker. Look at him get ransacked by an earthquake that is going to cave in that entire bunker with him in it. Look at him get found by a God who is omnipresent and omnipotent enough to implode an underground bunker where the wealthy will imagine they can flee to and so survive the calamities that are falling on the poor look at him be the same look at the great equalizer that's the great tribulation the lord woke me up 
Deuteronomy 3 6 when I was all done and out feeling like trash so as to help you be demoted from imagining me a pitiable human being this is what God said to me and we devoted them to destruction as we did to Sihon the king of Heshbon devoting to destruction every city men women children I go to bed languishing feeling pity <laughs> you know self-pity for myself like what I'm out your own line Ooh, ah! and then I finally fall asleep with crusty like tears around my eyes mm. and the Lord a couple of hours later yanks me out with Deuteronomy 36 telling me would you get ready for what for who why are you crying because we are about to enter into a time in history where we are going to devote all of them to destruction as we did to Sihon, the king of Heshbon, devoting to destruction every city, women and... So I mean pity? Come on guys, you know, let's take a breather. Let's take a breather y'all. Come on. Why in the world are you feeling sorry for me when I am about to just like chill watching you get mowed to the ground and have nobody come for you because there's no hospitals at least not functionally there's so much disaster everywhere it's every man for himself everybody's thirsty if at all the global elites cannot give everybody water right now today and we're not in the tribulation if they can't feed everybody right now today and we're not yet in the tribulation if they cannot give health care to everybody today if there are people that are that, that have got perfectly treatable diseases that nonetheless are dying from them because the global elites cannot get to them. How much worse than will their ability to uh, react to the global catastrophe that is commenced by the tribulation? When everybody now is subjugated to the humanitarian crises that you find in some of the most impoverished parts of the world. Anthony Guterres and his band of miscreants are not gonna be able to feed you when it is a quart of wheat for a denarius a day's wages for a loaf of bread do not harm the oil and the wine when the the man with the scales the horseman of the apocalypse that i believe is the black horse when he is riding out guys no one's coming for you no global elite in and of himself themselves they're gonna be in a, such a bad bunch that they're going to be asking rocks to fall on them no one is coming for you those dear people are the true hunger games those people are the true cabins in the wood those people are the true squid games and guess who the elite are now did you take a wild guess just yet yeah it's us guys christians in the sky are going to be watching all of you play the hunger games and we are going to decide in the sky above god our heaven is going to decide who they will give mercy to and who they will leave to just be massacred who will be handed over to such a violent reprobate mind that they will take the mark of the beast versus who will be given enough mercy to be given the seal of God and so face beheading but nonetheless you get to go to heaven eventually that's where we're going so I mean pity I don't get it like why are you pitying me I'm about to be a member of the capital eating some olives that I am dipping in some heavenly juice while people are dying gain perspective I do beg I beg or beg or gain perspective stop pitying me I find it offensive I am in right standing with God I have purchased the pearl of great price and I am being gazed upon by people who are on the broad road that leads to destruction that many enter into ah uh, stop it you sound like a crow ah uh, ah uh, stop it I said it you sound like a crow just stop pitying me and recognize how irresponsible it is to pity me and rather more responsible to be me to be prepared to take up the pearl of great price and sell everything that you have that you might acquire it to put your hand to the plow and not look back for no one who does that is fit to enter the kingdom of heaven to take up your cross and follow christ daily and when you happen upon a believer in the lord jesus christ that is suffering you better give them food when they're hungry you better give them drink when they're thirsty you better give them clothes when they're naked you better you better you better go out of your way to visit them in prison when they are sick you better give them hospitality when they're in dire need of it otherwise god is going to tell you when i was hungry you didn't give me food when i was naked you did not give me clothes when i was thirsty you did not give me drink when i was in prison and in what is this and sick you did not visit me and when i needed a place to stay you did not give me hospitality look at yourself because when you pity me from where you're standing without like literally extending a 
hand to alleviate my sorrow you are no different from ananias and Safira. i have said that over and over and over again i loathe pity because there are enough people watching me for me to not be in a position to be pitied but envy is causing people to pity me so i am about to i'm currently putting such human individuals in their place that they might understand to pity me i don't accept your booze at my party because that booze that you have brought here is unacceptable in this particular party given that it's not a pity party i am in no position to be pitied because i am about to be elevated into the sky i am lazarus do you understand and if you're gazing at me struggling while you're burping burping a whole bunch of wealth mm. You are no different from the king that makes me eat crumbs at the bottom of his table and then I get ushered into Abraham's bosom. I'm Lazarus, don't you see? A Lazarus in both regards. The one with the rich man and the one that gets that is brought forth. The one that makes Jesus weep and so therefore he gets raised from the dead, the resurrected Lazarus and the Lazarus that goes to Abraham's bosom. I am both Lazaruses and like MC Hammer, they're both untouchable. But there are people out here mourning the death of the dead Lazarus that's going to be alive in a minute. And there are people out here underestimating the Lazarus that was a little hobo. Mm. So the hobo that I spoke about in my earlier analogy, that is in heaven. The tables turn. And now the very CEO that gave him a 400 rand tip on the side of the road, instead of setting him up in a home, is going to have basically the heaven that Lazarus is in. Make a decision if they will grant that CEO the mark of God, the seal of God on his forehead because he has humbled himself to realize what a, uh, like a, uh, a dweeb he was or if he will continue to be the pompous, arrogant, humiliatable rando that then eventually also takes the mark of the beast because he just absolutely loves his comforts. Both great and small, rich and poor will be made to take a mark on their right hand and on their foreheads and or their foreheads. And this is the mark of the beast 666 you could either be the guy that takes the mark of the beast or the guy that takes the beheading because you took the seal of god either way it's gonna be a hard knock life for you it's a hard knock life for you ain't nobody gonna be like instead of treated you get tricked instead of kisses you get kicked if you take the mark of the beast you get tricked and kicked by heaven if you don't take the mark of the beast you get tricked and, and kicked by the antichrist either way Stay the tree that you get tricked. Stay the kisses you get kicked. And you think I'm having a hard knock life? <laughs> Next part.